I don't really believe in trends, but these are gonna be the biggest ones. Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking all about the biggest trends of 2022. You know, I don't believe in investing in trends. Well, maybe you don't know, which is why you should be subscribed and watching the videos, but that's not the point. But for those of you that are familiar with the channel, you know, I don't believe in investing in trends. I believe in investing in your personal style, but sometimes your style is trendy. It's interesting to talk about trends, which is why we're gonna dive into it. But first, be sure you are subscribed to the channel and you have the bell notification turned on to get notified every time I upload and let's get in to the video. The first trend of 2022 that is going to be huge, is going to take off, is actually going to be brutalism. Brutalism is an interesting style of architecture and it's mostly concrete, it uses wood forms, and it was popular, no, it, was, it really was not popular, pre-World War II and then economic ruin, all of that, it really fell out until like Louis Kahn picked back up with it in the 70s, 80s, Really interesting style, uses a lot of concrete, can be seen as being very cold and harsh, but it is going to be very popular because we're going to see a lot of the organic modernism modernismists move into brutalism, and then a lot of them are gonna move into Grand Millennial. But brutalism is, it's interesting, it's concrete. We're gonna see it contrasted a lot with wood, light wood, kind of like plywood vibes. It's actually cool, it's a style I appreciate, not somewhere I would, personally live, but that's not the point of the trend video. But brutalism is interesting. We're going to see it become very popular. This is gonna be popular in more ways than just like concrete architecture. That's gonna be like the highest of high end. We're gonna see it popular with concrete floors, plaster and lime wash paints. We're gonna see a lot of that happening mixed with these wood tones that are kind of plywood-like, chipboard-like, because they're easy, they're affordable, you can DIY them, and they can come out being very useful. And, and depending if you like the style or not, they're good looking. So it's a very interesting style that I think is going to become very, very popular in 2022. The next big trend that we are gonna see for 2022 is convertible use furniture. Furniture that doubles is two things, and it might be a cabinet that you open and has a desk in it because, you know, now with things coming back to being normal, we're going to work again. People don't need those home offices or those giant setups they had, but they still might be working from home a little bit. So something like that's gonna be really interesting and useful. We're also gonna see other convertible use pieces of furniture become very, very popular. We're gonna see pieces of furniture that maybe have a more formal look to them, but are really comfortable, or maybe are really comfortable, but used in a formal space. We're using these spaces in more ways than one. Since we've been trapped at home for a, a while, and you know, especially in 2020, 2021 is that year of like change. 2022 is gonna be, we're there, we've changed. We're using these convertible use spaces and pieces of furniture to accommodate our lifestyle, our new lifestyles, and I think that's great, but we are gonna see those pieces of furniture be used all over the place. We're gonna be changing things up to use them. I mean, maybe I won't be, but that's fine. A lot of other people will be because we want to have our spaces function as best as possible. That's something that 2020 and 2021 really taught us was that we need for our homes to be our sanctuaries and we need for them to work for us. We want them to be beautiful, but it's most important that they function properly for us and these convertible use pieces of furniture really do that. The next big trend of 2022 is going to be a lot of the people that really love minimalism, that really love these monochromatic color schemes going for green tones. We're seeing this in the color of the year, the 2022 color of the year, like literally four paint companies have picked the same color, great. That's gonna be a big color because it's actually a big color for 2021. We're already seeing a lot of people that really, really like complete neutrals transitioning into this tone. These light green sage-like tones, very pretty, very warm, and they create a little bit of contrast. And as we go through the year, we're gonna get more and more and more contrast to the point where we're seeing like burnt umbers and burgundies used in these more modern organic spaces. You know, in traditional design, these colors have always been used. Like I said, in my dated styles and how to fix them video, we are going to see a lot of modern organic style enthusiasts shifting into Grand Millennial, something really big, but that leads me into the next trend, which is actually maximalism. 
And this is going to be kind of like a subcategory in there, like the organic modernist, they're gonna transition into all of these styles. That was probably the biggest, most popular style in 2021 was that organic modern. And they're transitioning into brutalism, they're transitioning into grand millennial, but there's also going to be a lot of people transitioning into maximalism. And it's going to be in line with that organic modernism, but we're gonna see people having more and more and more. They're bringing in more layers and more texture, gonna add more colors in. That's always fun and nice. I'm a little bit confused as to why this is. I see it coming, I see it happening right now, but I don't know if it's because people are over minimalism, which I don't necessarily think is the case. I think it's more of just, these trend-driven individuals are like, oh, this is the next thing, this is the next thing, and so they're accumulating and just getting a lot of stuff and then trying to fit it and work it all into a space, and I think it's slipping into maximalism. Maximalism in traditional interior design has always been really popular. It's always been something enthusiasts love, traditional design lovers enjoy, uh, mixing patterns and colors and bold and vibrant, darker spaces, really fun. We're going to see that transition into the more modern spaces just because that's how trends work. It's transitioning into them now. Um, I like it, I think it's fun. I think it puts a little bit of something interesting and different onto a lot of these modern spaces that can sometimes feel a little bit bland. I'm trying to put that nicely because I do like an all neutral space, but sometimes you need to have a little bit of contrast. You need to have something a little bit fun. If you like this, try it out with some soft furnishings, blankets, pillows, maybe a throw or an ottoman that's easily changeable because you might end up being like, you know what, not for me, it's a little bit too much. I want something more neutral and simple, but it's a really fun style that I think a lot of people are gonna jump on board with. Like I said, we're seeing it with greens, burgundies, burnt umbers, um, a lot of these tones, really popular, really fun, really cool. We're also gonna see it in a plum, but that's gonna be more on the grand millennial side of things. Love that for us. The next trend that I'm gonna talk about today is 70s. 70s is coming back in a big way, and I want you to think 70s in terms of like Kelly Wurstler as opposed to 70s in terms of like the 1970s. Because Kelly Wurstler always uses these really cool, iconic pieces from the 70s, and she'll use them in lots of interesting ways. She'll mix them with neutrals, a little bit of color, some really fun things. That's what's going to be very in, these 70s designed pieces. These iconic shapes and figures, we're gonna see a lot of really interesting, interesting things coming about. This is kind of a transition from mid-century. We're moving from mid-century more into the 70s style, a little bit swankier, a little bit cool, very polished, which I like though. The 70s style coming back in, these spaces are going to be very polished, very put together, very curated. I love that for us. It's something really cool, really interesting. I think this will layer in and work with just about any style because we see them coming in and they're very neutral in tone. We're using a lot more classic ideas in terms of trendy furniture because the trends, they like come in and out and people are just a little bit tired of the consumerism. So a lot of these companies are getting wise to that fact and they're making things that are a little bit more classic, a little bit more easy to transition into other styles. That's what we're seeing here. This sofa, oh, love it. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening with this and these 70s pieces, these iconic styles and designs. A little bit of 80s pulled into there too with some of the like loose side and interesting things like that. But we're seeing a lot of 70s mixed in with the mid-century, mixed in with a little bit of 80s, glam, polished, finished, beautiful but it's not gonna be overwhelming. It's not gonna be like it was in the 70s. Like there's no shag carpet happening, which, oh, we don't even need to talk about that. But we're gonna see a lot of cool things happening with these 70s style interiors, the 70s inspiration, and these pieces that people are going to be layering in that are really, really interesting. Another huge trend that we are seeing is not necessarily an interior design trend of a specific style, but it's the idea and principle of environmentalism. You guys hear from me all of the time. It's a major focus in my design and my practices and what I do and how I live. But a lot of other people are realizing that yes, fast home decor is a thing. It's just as bad as fast fashion. So we are seeing a major turn in that. People are going for a lot more organic and sustainable materials. Think cottons, think not synthetic fibers. <laughs> we're seeing silks, we're seeing a lot of really interesting fabrics come about that are organic, that are of nature, that are natural materials. Really love that, very excited about it. We're seeing a lot of wicker, a lot of caning, 
always very interesting and it's fun to see people using real woods, real fabrics, real fibers. Always nice to see that, but people are also investing in more serious pieces that are a little bit more long-term. I love that and I've said it quite a few times that when you invest in something, it has a longer period of life. Like the better quality, the more life it gets out of it. But I also wanna let you know that that doesn't necessarily mean that life has to be with you. You might have a piece for a few years that you buy that's really amazing quality, and then maybe you get tired of it. That's a piece you can sell. That's a piece you can give away. That's a piece that will have a life in another space as opposed to being a throwaway piece or something that is just not gonna hold up to what you need. It's not gonna be the quality. People are realizing this and they are loving it. We're seeing a lot more vintage come about, which is a great environmentally friendly way to decorate and furnish a home. We love that. You know. I live for vintage, I live for an investment piece, but I always want those to be reflective of your style. We're seeing that a lot happen with this environmentalism because people are kind of just sick of seeing like people online and influencers redecorating everything every six months. So I'm just over it, I'm a little bit tired. Like if you don't stick with it for more than a couple of months, you obviously didn't like it when, when it went in. So what, what was the point of doing it to begin with? I don't know, not the point of this video, but environmentalism is gonna be big, it's gonna be huge. We are seeing it come about. But what I think is really interesting about environmentalism is that it does not have to be any specific style. You can have a very traditional style, you can have very modern, you can have that 1970s retro style, does not matter. You can always incorporate environmentalism into that through sustainable practices and principles, making sure the companies you are buying from practice those principles, making sure that all of the materials are sustainably harvested. That's always really important when it comes to woods and fabrics and fibers. You always wanna make sure you are investing in and you are looking into, you are investigating everything you're buying. That way you know you're getting something that's good quality, that will last you or will have a value later on that you can sell and you can replace with something else you like. That way you're not just feeding into this vicious cycle of adding things to landfills. Not the vibe, not cool, not a trend anymore. Environmentalism and sustainability, number one for 2022 and forever going forward because we're done with it. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below and let me know which of these trends you see being the biggest, which is your favorite, which of these is like incorporated into your style are you very excited about? Let me know in the comment section down below. You know, we love to interact with you and give this video a like. You also know someone that maybe they need to take advantage of one of these trends, they need to upgrade, they need to elevate, or maybe their style is trendy and they're just prepared to start their social media empire. Share this video with them because friends help friends and I will see you in the next one.